Welcome to Learn This Game, where you can learn about board games and how they are played. Today, we'll be looking at Warp's Edge. In this video, there will be a general description and overview of the game. We'll inventory the components, and we'll go through some gameplay, including setup, sample turns, and victory conditions. Lastly, we'll review any accessories you may find helpful for this game. In the description, there will be some helpful links and a timestamp index, so you can navigate directly to any part of the presentation. If you want to skip this introduction and go straight to the game setup and gameplay, you can go to the timestamp index now in the description. If you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. You can also leave a comment to let us know what game you'd like to see reviewed, or if you have this game, let everyone know if this is one you'd recommend. Warp's Edge was first published in 2020 by Renegade Game Studios and designed by Scott Ohms. The publisher link will be in the description so you can verify the current availability of the game. In this solo bag building space combat game, you will be attempting to destroy an alien mothership and its fleet. The age recommendation is 10 and older. This is considered an easy game to play, and each game averages about 30 to 45 minutes in playtime. The game is designed for solo play only, and there is no official multiplayer variant. There is no app required, and there are no apps available for this game. There is currently one expansion for the game, which includes all new skill cards, starfighters, tokens, and motherships. Warp's Edge is the second in a series of games called the Solo Hero series. The first game in the series is called Proving Grounds, and was designed by Kane Klenko. Scott Holmes has published other games as well, including games in the Tiny Epic series. If you enjoyed Warp's Edge, you may also enjoy these other bag building games. Now that you've seen a brief description of the game, let's get into the game itself. Warp's Edge is a bag building game that uses cards, tokens, and cardboard dashboards. Dice maps and boards are not used. Thematically, this is a science fiction space combat game in which you must battle and destroy a mothership and its fleet. For those who are unfamiliar with this game mechanic, in bag building games, you start off with a basic set of items such as tokens and gradually use them to acquire more powerful tokens, thereby building up the effectiveness of the bag contents. Now let's see how to successfully win the game. Your goal is to defeat the mothership before you run out of time. There are no scores to keep. You will either have a decisive victory or resounding defeat. There are five different motherships in the base game, and each has unique characteristics. The special instructions for each mothership are printed on the mothership card. This particular mothership card states that this mothership cannot attack or be attacked until all enemies from the deck and row have been defeated during the current warp. Time is measured in warps, and the maximum number of warps to defeat the mothership is on the top left of the board. So in this case, you have to defeat the mothership before the end of the fourth warp. The composition of the enemy deck is also listed on the mothership card. In this case, the enemy deck will be comprised of the following. Five yellow level ships, four orange level ships, and three red level ships. This means that you have to defeat all of these ships during a warp before you can start attacking the mothership. When you finally get to this particular mothership, you will have to destroy all three sections before the current warp ends to win the game. The number of lasers needed to destroy each section is indicated at the top left of the section. Destroy all three sections of this mothership before the current warp ends, and you win. You lose the game if the last warp ends before you destroy the mothership, or your hull meter reaches zero and your starfighter is destroyed. Now let's look at the components. There are two double-sided starfighter dashboards for a total of four starfighters you can choose from to pilot against the motherships. There are 27 enemy cards you must fight to get to the mothership. They are divided into three color-coded levels of difficulty. There are 18 skill cards. There are three double-sided mothership dashboards which provide a choice of five motherships. There is one dashboard where both sides are used by the same mothership. There are 109 pilot tokens. There are 10 tokens with white borders that are used at the start of the game. 
There are five damage markers to mark the motherships, hull, and shield markers for your starfighter. One mothership marker is used for some of the motherships, and one warp marker to keep track of the remaining warps. There's one token bag used to draw the tokens, and there are two token trays. There's one reference card detailing the rewards you gain for destroying enemy ships, and one 24-page color rule book with a 28-page storybook that not only provides an accompanying narrative, but also a way to customize your game setup based on choices you make during your reading of the story. Now let's set up the game for our first playthrough. First, select your starfighter and place it in front of you. Each starfighter has its own unique characteristics to allow for different playstyles. Place the hull and shield markers onto your starfighter dashboard. When being attacked, you will first reduce your shield points and then your hull points. Each starfighter dashboard has a list of the steps taken each game turn. The hold is where you can store the indicated maximum number of tokens to play at a later time. The bottom left shows the energy cost to repair two shield points. You may recover two shield points for every one energy point spent. Hull points cannot be repaired. The bottom area will show any special instructions for this starfighter, if any. Finally, this area shows the power tokens that will be used in the game for this starfighter. This is known as the loadout. There are two token trays. First, look at the loadout of power tokens on the Starfighter dashboard. There are three of each token. Place them in the corresponding slots in the token tray and place the remaining excess power tokens in the game box. The excess power tokens will not be used in the game with the Starfighter. Next, place the blue maneuver tokens in their spot. They only come with a point value of one each. The remaining spaces in tray 2 contain the power tokens that number 3 each. The costs listed on the bottom of the tray refer to the number of green energy tokens required to purchase one of these tokens. The second tray contains the red laser and green energy tokens available for purchase during the game. Place the red laser tokens in their corresponding spaces according to their values of 1, 2, and 3. Then place the green energy tokens in their spaces per their number designations also, 1, 2, and 3. The second tray also shows the cost and energy points needed to purchase one of these tokens. The 10 starting tokens have white rings around their edges. Place these and one of the yellow power tokens as designated in your loadout into the draw bag. Thoroughly shake the bag to mix the contents and draw 5 random tokens. These will be the tokens used during your first turn. Next, shuffle the skill cards and draw two from the top of the deck. We will keep one face up next to the Starfighter dashboard and return the other face down at the bottom of the deck. The top left of the card shows if the card is offensive, defensive, or an upgrade. Some cards have no category. Next is the activation requirement. This is the cost and tokens to activate the skill card. Activation requirements, circled in red, require us to permanently remove the spent tokens from the game but the effect at the bottom of the card is ongoing for the rest of the game. Finally, at the bottom of the card is the effect of that card and if it is an ongoing effect. In this case, we will keep the CleanerBot Steve skill card and return the other card to the bottom of the skill deck. Next, we select a mothership. For this playthrough, we will select the easiest mothership with a difficulty level of 1. Next, we place the warp marker on the card. Now we make sure to read the special instructions. This mothership cannot attack or be attacked until all enemies from the deck and row have been defeated during the current warp. When attacking the mothership, each of these three sections will need to be destroyed. Lastly, the mothership card indicates the composition of the enemy deck. Now that we know the deck setup, we can prepare the enemy deck. We sort the enemy cards into three face down piles per level as indicated by the colors yellow, orange, and red. We shuffle each pile and draw the number of cards indicated by the deck setup. We draw five yellow cards, four orange cards, and three red cards. We stack the enemy cards face down with the red cards at the bottom, the orange cards in the middle, and the yellow cards on top. The enemy deck is now ready. We place the excess cards in the game box so they will not be used during the game. Now let's lay out the components so we can begin gameplay. First, we place the Starfighter dashboard in front of us. The turn details are found on the upper left part of the Starfighter dashboard. We will keep a copy here for reference throughout the game. 
We will keep the token supply in the token bag off screen to the left of our Starfighter dashboard. Next, we'll place the active tokens we drew to the left of the Starfighter. Once tokens are discarded, they will be placed in the area to the right of our ship. We will then place our skill card to the left of the token pool. Additional skill cards will also be placed in this area. At the top of the screen, we will place the skill card deck, the five damage tokens, the mothership with the warp token, and space for the discarded enemy cards. Finally, we'll place the enemy deck in the middle and draw four cards, one at a time, placing them from left to right. Now that we've set up the game, let's see how the game is played. The game is played in a series of warps, which is determined by the mothership. In this game, there are a maximum of four warps. Each warp is divided into turns. Each turn consists of four steps as listed on the starship dashboard. We will continue to play turns until we can no longer draw five tokens from the token bag. The warp ends when the token bag is empty, but we still need to draw tokens from the token bag. You can never look into the token bag but you can feel inside the token bag with your hand to see how many tokens are left. Each turn starts with adding cards to the enemy row in the middle of the play area. Since we completed this step during setup, we can move to the second step, which is pilot actions when we spend our tokens. In this step, we use the tokens in our pool to take actions. We can take unique actions as many times as we want and are only limited by the number of available tokens. We can take the following actions during this step. We can move tokens to and from the hold. Tokens in the hold are not discarded at the end of the turn or warp. Each ship has a different hold capacity. We can also fire lasers using laser tokens. We can perform maneuvers with maneuver tokens, and we can use energy tokens to repair shields and buy more tokens from the token trays. We can use special power tokens to execute their special actions. An explanation of each power token is listed on the back of the rulebook. And finally, we can spend the required resources to activate a skill card. Each skill card requires different amounts and types of resources. Now let's take a closer look at the enemy cards during this step. At the beginning of the turn, there will be four enemy ships. Each enemy ship has a name with a color that indicates its difficulty level. The number in red shows how many laser points are required to defeat this ship and the icon beneath shows the reward for doing so. The number in blue is how many points are required to evade this ship, and the icon beneath shows the reward for a successful evasion. The icons at the bottom show how much damage is dealt by this ship when it attacks. Let's start the step by looking at our skill card. We will accumulate more skill cards as we proceed through the game. The bottom of the card explains the skill we can execute, and the top right shows that to activate this skill card, we would need to spend two energy tokens. A skill card can only be acted and used once per warp, unless it has an ongoing effect. In this case, we do not have two energy tokens to activate the card, and we cannot use the skill at this time since we have no tokens yet in the token discard area. Recall that in order to start attacking the mothership, we will need to destroy all of the enemy ships first before the warp ends. Now let's see how we can use our two red laser tokens. If we apply two laser tokens to the fourth enemy ship, we can destroy it and receive one blue maneuver token as a reward. The blue maneuver token is then placed in the token bag. The destroyed enemy ship is placed on the discard pile next to the mother ship, and the two laser tokens are placed in the token discard area. Next, we'll place one blue maneuver token under the Venom card. Since it takes two maneuver points to successfully evade this card, this ship will only be considered stunned, which means it will not be able to fire during the next enemy attack step. We now place one maneuver token under the ship named Stalker. Since it only takes one maneuver token to evade, we can claim the reward of one green energy token. We then place the reward token into the token bag. We can place the enemy card onto the enemy discard pile and place the spent maneuver token in the token discard area. We have one green energy token remaining in our token pool. We can place it in the ship's hold, which has a carrying capacity of two tokens for this particular starfighter. Any tokens not played or stored would otherwise be placed in the token discard area at the end of this step. Any tokens in the hold can be used during later turns, 
and do not count against the drawing of five tokens from the token bag. Since we have no tokens left to play, we move to the enemy attack step. During this step, the enemy ships get their turn to attack. If an enemy ship has at least one token under it, it is considered stunned and cannot attack this turn. Since the Venom ship has a token under it, it is considered stunned and cannot attack. The other ship, however, is not stunned and inflicts one damage to our shields. We then move the shield marker down one space. For each damage dealt to our shields, but not our hull, we have to select one token from the discard area and remove it permanently from the game. We then move the tokens below the enemy ships to the area above them. They will apply to future turns. The final step in the turn is pilot plans. We now thoroughly shake the token bag and draw five more tokens for our token pool. We can now use these tokens in our pool and the ships hold during the next turn. If there are fewer than five tokens in the token bag, the warp ends. We start the next turn with enemy arrivals. For each empty slot, we draw the top card of the enemy deck and place it face up in that slot one at a time from left to right. If there are no empty slots, we can skip this step. If there are not enough cards to fill the empty slots, we fill as many as possible, but we cannot slide the cards together to fill in any gaps. We now move to the pilot action step when we can spend our tokens. We can place one laser token on the fourth enemy ship. This does not defeat the ship since it requires four laser points to do so, but it will stun the ship so it cannot inflict three damage points this turn. Next, we place one maneuver token on the third enemy ship. When added to the token placed during the previous turn, this gives us a total of two maneuver points, which lets us successfully evade the enemy ship. Our reward is one maneuver token, which we then place in the token bag. We place the two expended maneuver tokens into the discard pool. The evaded enemy ship is then placed on the enemy discard pile. Next, we place one maneuver token under the second enemy ship. This does not allow us to evade the ship, but it does stun it so it cannot fire back this turn. Next, we place the laser 2 token under the first ship. This is enough to defeat the ship and gives us a new reward. Page 21 explains the reward icons. In this case, we can immediately draw three tokens from the token bag and add them to our token pool. We place the ship onto the enemy discard pile and place the laser token in the discard area. Now let's look at our skill card. For a cost of two energy tokens, we can use this skill card to return three tokens from our discard area to the token bag. To activate a skill card, we place the required tokens onto the card. If we place a token with more points than required, we do not get any change or future credit. Once it is activated, we can use the skill on this or any future turn. If we use the skill now, we place the spent tokens into the discard area and turn the card sideways to show that it is exhausted. For this card, we place any three discarded tokens into the token bag so they can be drawn again. Each skill card can be activated and used only once per warp. Skill cards that have a red outline around its activation requirement have an ongoing effect. This means the effect is not exhausted and lasts for the remainder of the game. It only has to be activated and used once. However, tokens spent on using these skill cards are removed from the game permanently instead of being placed in the discard area. When we reach step 4 of the turn and cannot draw 5 tokens from the token bag, the warp immediately ends. First, we take all tokens in play and put them back into the token bag. This includes tokens in the pool, discard area, tokens assigned to enemies, mothership sections, and skills. However, any tokens in the Starfighter hold can remain there. Next, we take the enemy cards in the row and the discard pile. We shuffle them together and place them face down onto the top of the enemy deck. Next, we refresh our skill cards to the upright position. We then draw two skill cards. We select one to keep and place the other face down at the bottom of the skill card pile. Next, we move the warp marker to the next warp space on the mothership. Finally, we draw five tokens from the token bag and place them in the token pool. We are now ready to start the next turn in the next warp. When all of the enemy ships have been defeated and placed in the discard pile, we can then start attacking the mothership. Each mothership is unique, so be sure to read the special instructions for the mothership you are fighting. 
Each section of the mothership must be attacked individually. Each section shows the tokens required to defeat it, the reward, and the damage inflicted when it attacks, just like the information shown on each enemy ship. Each time a section is defeated, we place a damage marker. If we destroy all three sections before the warp ends, we destroy the mothership and win the game. Let's quickly recap the victory and defeat conditions. Recall that to win the game, we must destroy the mothership before the final warp ends. We lose if the final warp ends before the mothership is destroyed or our hull meter reaches zero. Here are a few ideas for accessories if you want to enhance your gaming experience. If you are playing on a dining room or coffee table, you may want to invest in a game mat. They are relatively inexpensive but make gameplay much easier, especially if you have to pick up cards. And of course, you can use the mats for a wide variety of card, tile, or board games. If you play the game often, you may want to invest in some card sleeves. These will prevent damage and wear and tear, thereby prolonging the life of the cards. This concludes this review of Warp's Edge. Visit us at these sites and don't forget to leave a comment to share your experience with the game, or to let us know what games you'd like to see reviewed and played. And if you'd like to experience something greater than blowing up an alien mothership, stick around for our disclaimer. Coming up next. Oh, my God.